What's up, goats? Welcome to our latest character video featuring one of the best boys of Genshin Impact, a personal favorite of mine since he was first released, Kadehara Kazuha. Again, welcome, especially if you're new here. Please smash that like button and consider subscribing to help me bring more of this content for you goats. This is Godric and I stream almost every night. I've been playing the game since launch. I've played it both on mobile and PC. Just saying to let you know that I know the struggle of playing on mobile. And yeah, with that ton of blabbering info, let's get right into the matter at hand. A review and guide to Kazuha to help you decide if you should pull for him or his constellations and get to know how to best build him. As you know, Kazuha was first released right before the region of Inazuma was released. It was the end of June 2021, if I remember correctly, and I got him days after. So Kazuha is, or was, also a traveler, a sort of an exile from his own country of Inazuma. He's also associated with his friend, who fans have called Tomo, which is friend in Japanese language, Tomodachi to be exact. You'll discover more about Kazuha as you play, of course, and as you progress in the story. So combat-wise, Kazuha wields a sword, and he's an Animo vision holder. His kit revolves around him, buffing whichever element he swirls. And with that, let's take a look at his talents. Normal attack, self-explanatory. Skill, Chihayaburu. So this skill is crazy useful in combat, in exploration, even in farming. So you either tap or hold it, but it would do almost the same effects. It will suck up small mobs, accent on small there, and some objects around you such as loot or even some dropped skill items such as Goba, Amber's Baron Bunny, Aloy's Bombs, among others. So the tap is a quick jump and a smaller AoE, while holding the skill sort of charges your suction and the AoE is bigger. Once you're in the air, you can either glide to reposition or do a plunge attack, or you can do both actually. And of course, that plunge attack is converted to Animo, which in turn can swirl. This enables Kazuha to swirl twice in a single skill use, of course when used correctly. More tips about his skill, you can use this even as you're in the air, either you're gliding or you just fell somewhere. This actually saved me from, you know, a lot of unnecessary falls. At the same time, I may have talked about this about Zhao, but similar to Kazuha, since his skill propels you up, you can use this to dodge some attacks like Magu Kenki, Azdaha, and you know, many more. So Kazuha's burst is called Kazuha Slash, and I swear I always see people complaining about this name. Yeah, anyway, this creates a big AoE that continuously deals Animo damage to all the mobs inside it. It deals one initial slash, followed by another four, so that's a total of five, we're so good at math, and at 60 energy cost and a 15 second cooldown, you won't have exactly a 100% uptime, but one activation per rotation is enough to provide the buffs for your party. Speaking of buffs, that's what this burst is all about. The burst has a sort of priority mechanic, so from Pyro, Hydro, Electro, and Cryo, in that order. For example, you have two monsters affected by different elements, one is Pyro and the other is Cryo. So, when you use Kazuha's Burst, it will infuse the Whirlwind Field with Pyro because of that priority. And finally, for whichever element was swirled, your party gains additional element damage bonus based on that. You'll see it scaling along with the talent level. That's why I crowned my Kazuha's Burst. Now on Kazuha's passives, another reason why Kazuha is good at exploring aside from his skill is the decrease in sprinting stamina. Just a nice little bonus. Next is the Poetics of Fubutsu. Now, this enables Kazuha to give your party elemental damage bonus, depending on what he swirled. Since the note here says that different elements can coexist, it's how swirling more than one element is possible. I have to admit, I never really paid attention to this, but if and when you actually try to do it, it takes a lot of practice to pull off. So now, let's first talk about his Ascension 4 passive, the Summon Swordsmanship. This allows his skill to absorb the element Kazuha comes in contact with, and when you plunge, you do another one but enhanced. This is really important because even just with his skill, you can absorb one element initially, and another one when you do the plunge. 
And when you do it with his burst, usually you'll just drown in all the effects and hardly see what's happening. But that's just me. Um, but yeah, for me, the good thing here is that you get a lot of reactions aside from the fact that you have elemental damage bonus. It's also why Kazuha has a great Animo support either at mono elemental teams or reaction teams because he can buff multiple elements, albeit of course with proper execution. Now, having seen his talents and kit, we can say that Kazuha is a great crowd controller, even more so a great support because of his elemental damage bonus and resistance shredding that you can get at the same time. That's because, of course, as you know, Kazuha can equip very well the Veridescent Venator for a set. So we're gonna touch on that later on the artifact section. And with that, I also have to say, the common factor for using either Kazuha or Venti is that if you're up against a lot of small mobs and need AoE, you go for Venti because of his burst. And although Kazuha is of course viable for the same reason, Venti's burst is just stronger and has a larger AoE than Kazuha's skill. Now, this is why Kazuha is a better option if you're up against larger sized mobs like Azdaha, the Mechanical Array, etc. Alright, now that we've covered his talents, let's go to weapons. So you can build Kazuha two ways, either as a pure elemental mastery support where, as the name implies, you go after all the EM that you can use from your artifacts. Or you can do a regular DPS build with crits and attack. Mind you, the regular DPS build path would mean that you lose out on his passive talents, just as we talked about, that would boost your main DPS and let alone your whole party. For our F2P goats, Iron Sting for pure EM build. No need for refinements as it wouldn't proc anyway. Mine is R5 long before I got Kazuha. I don't remember who I used it on but yeah. Or we also have the Dark Iron Sword, a 3 star and of course has slower scaling. You can check out my F2P weapons for which character video on how to get it. Um, yeah, you can use this one if you have no sword belay to spare for an iron sting. And we also have the alley flash which has an EM substat but it's very very minimal that I would advise against it. Besides, the passive isn't really good on him. Finally, his signature weapon, or at least the one that's always released with him, because I personally don't like the color combination, doesn't suit him in, you know, any angle. <laughs> Anyway, this weapon has around 30 EM difference. For me, is not really something worth spending your gems on to. Um, the value though is on the passive. Fit for a pure burst DPS Kazuha, this weapon can buff your whole party even more by giving you bonus damage in addition to the attack percent. And special mention for our Kazuha goats out there who have a hard time with getting decent artifacts and you know not having enough energy recharge, you can go with Sacrificial Sword, Sacrificing, See what I did there. Sacrificing the EM substat. So you can use Sacrificial or Favonius, but you should prioritize Sacrificial over Favonius because remember that you need crits to proc the Favonius passive and Swirl does not crit. You'll have a hard time looking for crits on top of you know the already hard enough search for your Elemental Mastery pieces. And if you're building Kazuha as a main DPS without EM, you can check out my guide to building DPS characters. And that build will look something like this. For 4 star options, you can go with Aminoma, Black Sword, Black Lift, or even Lion's Roar if you're pairing him with Pyro or Electro supports. And for 5 stars, Primordial Jade Cutter is a very good choice, of course, because of the insane crit rate. And Skyward Blade is also a good option, as well as Summit Shaper, and yeah, that's about it. So Mist Splitter is a very great weapon as it is, but Kazuha won't be able to utilize it because he has no elemental infusion to his normal attacks. And now on to artifacts. I've said it before, Viridescent Venerer. Only. <laughs> um, yeah, this set will further turn Kazuha into a powerhouse support because as he increases your elemental damage with his kit, like we discussed earlier, this set will reduce the resistance of mobs to whatever element you swirled. This I guess is his downside, that farming his artifacts would be such a pain because you specifically want all your sands, goblet, and circlet to give you elemental mastery, and you're not even sure what the substats would be. So yeah, I wish you go to the best of luck in your farming. For stat priority, pure EM, pure elemental mastery, your next priority if you have the liberty of it is energy recharge. Like I said, it's a common issue for some Kazu havers to not burst on cooldown, so try to get a good balance of ER above 150 is recommended. And of course, attack percent if you could look for some. 
Now, if you're still pre-AR45 and you haven't unlocked the 5-star artifacts yet, don't worry as you can use either the 4-piece Instructor, Exile, or Scholar. If you're building him as a DPS, of course, typical attack percent, animo damage bonus, and crit rate or crit damage on your sands, goblet, and circlet respectively. For the set, it can be a 2-piece attack percent and a 2-piece viridescent, or a 4-piece viridescent but with a DPS main stats. Or you can actually use 4-piece Shemenawas. I'm sure you have some spares from when you're farming for Emblem, because it gives you additional normal or charged or plunge damage after you use your skill. And obviously, you plunge right after you use Kazuha's skill. Alright, so just a couple of notes. Like I said, Swirl does not crit, so as a pure EM support, you don't need the crits, except for when you use Favonius Sword. And if you're building him as a DPS, you need to understand that the crits you're looking for are for your raw Animo damage. Now, this is also something that I could advise our goats who have trouble completing the 4-piece Viridescent Venator set. You can, in the meantime, use a 2-piece Viridescent and 2-piece Attack Percent, or even a 2-piece Emblem for the ER bonus. That could be a temporary DPS build, and just go with pure EM once you have your pieces. Now let's look at Kazuha's teams. So Kazuha's a really flexible unit, like the other Animo supports. You can use him in freeze teams, you can use him in other reaction teams, and I personally love using Kazuha with some of these hyper carries. Ayato with Yunjin and Bennett, Raiden, Yaimiko, or Fischl with Bennett or Dayona, Ayaka with Shenha and Dayona, and especially with C2 Kazuhavers, you'll enjoy him with Hu Tao, Shengchu, and or Yelan, and Zhongli or Albedo. And they won't dwell too long here, so you get the idea. What I'd say is that you can go use him if you're going against bosses or large mobs. Okay, now if you're already a Kazuhaver like me, or if you're getting him for the first time, let's look at how Kazuha's constellation looks. First up, of course, C1 changes how we play Kazuha. As before, you either use skill and burst, or burst and skill. Now, you can use your skill, burst, and skill again. This opens up a different approach in playing him, basically. So C2 further enhances Kazuha as a burst sub DPS, so when you use his burst, your whole party gains an additional 200 EM, which is a lot by the way. And of course, we know that C3 and C5 increases skill and burst level by 3. So for C4, this is for Kazuha's utility-ish. It sort of makes sure that Kazuha isn't out of energy, or in turn, his burst. I mean, that's really crazy because he'd regen every second if his ER is 45 below, given that he's gliding, which of course is completely possible when you use your skill. And finally, C6, this transforms Kazuha from a support to a full-blown DPS-capable character. So after you use your skill or burst, you gain Animo and Fusion, although for a short time, but you can actually use the Misplitter on him and get its stacks. So yeah. Building him pure EM with C6 still doesn't reduce his value because all the EM would be converted to his normal charged or plunge damage. So that's all for the constellations. Now, I know that these are really enticing, I mean, even I am thinking about grabbing some, even just up to C2. So let's just jump to the question. Should you pull for Kazuha or should you pull for his constellations? Because let's be honest, even at C0, I'm using an F2P weapon and I'm able to clear the abyss, enjoying the content, which is the most important thing. And right now, we know that the patch 3.0 is coming up with lots of new characters. Even more so, the devs are introducing the new element and its mechanics. So we're definitely gonna see some changes with how we play. And as a Kazu haver, he definitely is useful and helpful, like I said, not just in combat, but also in exploring. And I feel like if I'm going to Sumeru, the new region, Kazuha would definitely be in my party because of the perks that he gives. We don't know what the other gimmicks the devs have in store for us, but I'm sure that it's not something that would affect how Kazuha is useful in the game, I mean for him specifically, but that's just at least for grabbing a C0 Kazuha. And if just getting a C0 Kazuha is your issue, let's weigh it. Okay, right now you have other possible 4-piece viridescent holders. You have Sucrose, who can also use the Thrilling Tales Catalyst, that would buff your main DPS. You can also use Venti, of course, almost identical kit as Sucrose and Kazuha, looking at crowd control. And we also have Sayu and Jean, who can both provide reliable healing. So those are just some of the realities that you have to look for. 
And I know that some of you are thinking of getting Kazuha because he's been out of the banners for a year and now that he's back, it's gonna be the best time to get him. Must be what you're thinking. But ultimately, of course, I'm gonna let you go to decide for yourself if you like this character, if you like his playstyle either as a support or if you make him your own um, main DPS. That's all on you and how you want to play the game. So I hope the points I made made sense and helped you out. And if you decide to pull for him, let me know in the comments what made you decide to get him. Or if you won't, let me know why as well. But either way, I wish you the best of luck on your wishes, whoever you want to pull for. So yeah, this is Godric, and again, please don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you on the next one. と。風を知らず、そこだ。もう一度散らまく。これ。せ。いざ。風の行く先を、そこだ。安全距離確認。燃えろ。それ。5時の炎。はっ。これ。やっと。風を知れ。よく。よく。みんなは俺が。気に気をつけろ。吸引テスト開始。風の赴くままに。風の。雲の行くごと。燃えろ。